Coming to you from an undisclosed location somewhere deep in the heart of the Santa Monica Mountains, I am your intrepid host, L.A. Marzulli. This is another episode of Questions with L.A. Uh, let's get the record straight right from the get-go. I am not Mr. Know-it-all. There's only one, and he's up there right now, but he's coming back soon, I hope anyway. And um, I will do my best. If you've got a question, shoot us an email, questions at lamarzulli.net, questions at lamarzulli.net. We'll get into your questions, but first, a word from our trusted sponsor. Folks, if you're trying to navigate market turbulence, why not set course to the Noble Gold Investments Safe Haven? With global uncertainty looming, your savings and retirement plans are under siege. But there's one asset that stood the test of time, and that, my friends, is gold. Unlock the peace of mind that comes with owning gold, the ultimate safe haven. And if precious metals are new to you, Noble Gold Investments will hold your hand through the whole process. They have a team of experts who will guide you every step of the way to safety. Thousands of investors have sheltered their retirement savings with Noble Gold Investments. Don't leave yourself exposed to the markets right now. It's way too risky. With gold at an all-time high and looking to climb even further, it's the perfect time to invest. Open a Noble Gold Investments IRA and secure your future with a free gold bullion coin. Act now before it's too late. 877-646-5347. 877-646-5347. Or visit noblegoldinvestments.com. That's noblegoldinvestments.com. Noblegoldinvestments.com. L.A., what do you think of the work of Ken Ammi? He has written many books on the Nephilim and wrote about you in some of them. He doesn't agree with some of the things that you uh, and other people agree or other people in the field discuss. Thanks, Rob. Well, that's an unfair question because, first of all, I haven't really accessed Ken. I really don't know what he's written about. I think I read one of his books years ago, but that's years ago. Um, you know what? I think, I think the answer here is biblical. Paul talks about this, whether Apollos or Paul... It's like, you know, if he's doing the Lord's work, bully for him. We're not going to agree on everything, and I get that. But you know what? It, it's okay. It's okay. And the Lord bless Ken and his work, and uh, um, just pray a blessing over him for 2024, and uh, that the Lord would enlarge his territory in Jesus' name. Um, this, is, this is kind of interesting. I'm sure you are familiar with predictive programming. Yes. Uh, what do you think of this? Since you have mentioned the spaceship over Washington, I thought you'd appreciate this. Hope those alien invaders are better navigators than this one. This, of course, is from The Simpsons. Is it real or not? I don't know. People can Photoshop anything these days, but there we go. Uh, I have warned about this. Um, they were actually in the 50s. There was a flotilla of UFOs went went right over the Capitol building. I mean, we've actually shown this at different, different uh, conferences and stuff. So... Um, it, it's this is from Elaine and thanks Elaine and and <laughs> uh, we are on the verge of disclosure. I'm laughing, but we'll be doing a show this week which talks about what I think is the um, the greatest UFO sort of disclosure of 2023, and I'll be showing that uh, on our UFO uh, film probably on Wednesday this week. So check it out. But yeah, the the the, the phenomena. Is real burgeoning and not going away. This is from Rick. Hey, I love your show and follow you on YouTube. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that, Rick. I have this video pop in my feed regarding the giants mentioned in the Bible. I was fascinated that this guy believes there are multiple tribes. He obviously knew his stuff. I copied and pasted the link at the bottom. I totally believe your view on the great deception that is coming. We have prayed for you and your protection. Please continue to do so. Thank you. Asking for a legion of angels. Yes, please. To guard you in all of your ways. So when you go Go to the, um, and, and you write, P.S., I truck at night and learned about you on Coast. Coast is great. It's actually a video of our good friend, Gary Wayne. Uh, Gary and I don't see eye to eye on, on everything, but about 98% of the stuff we agree on. He's an incredible researcher, uh, one of the best Nephilim researchers on the planet, in my opinion. Um, the difference is I'm out in the field. Gary's more in academia, which is great. We need both. So you put the two of us together when I'm down in Saksiwaman or Oriyatan Tambo or uh, the sites that we've been in and around the Americas or over Europe, and then you, you take Gary Wayne's and you plug that in. 
Wow, now you've really got something. Hope that helps. This is from Dom. Hey, Ali, I love your show regarding giants, Nephilim on the earth in those days, and also after. The thought of a second incursion is popular. A, fr a friend suggested that some of them did not die in the flood because spaceships carried them away. I've heard of this before. And that's how they were still around after the flood. Well, it, it might not be uh, either or. It might be both and. But I truly believe, as my late mentor, Dr. I.D.E. Thomas, used to say, there was an abs absolutely there was a second incursion, second, third, fourth incursion. We're, we're having incursions now. The book of Daniel, which is sealed, chapter 2, verse 43, tells us that their seed will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not cleave to them. Whose seed are we talking about? All goes back to Genesis 3.15, which is the gateway to the biblical prophetic narrative. So Daniel, chapter 2, verse 43, their seed will mingle. Whose seed are we talking about? And, and, and why is the seed mingling? Because they're creating hybrids. Welcome to what's going on right now. This is why our UFO films are so important, because we rip the covers back of this very dark secret. Wow, and number six, cattle mutilations? Are you kidding me? The darkest film I've ever worked on. But it talks about, in our opinion, that the material, the blood and the genetic material from the cow is used to create an artificial womb. We may be the first researchers ever to postulate that. Let's continue. This is from Carlos. Hey, Le and I love this. This is so pithy. Carlos, I love you. This is great. Here we go. What do you think of the discoveries at the Euphrates River, and what does this mean in Bible prophecy? Um, according to biblical prophecy, that doesn't happen till much later on in the tribulation. And then we get this huge army coming across the Euphrates. But so, you know, we can have seasons of drought, all this kind of stuff. Is the Euphrates drying up? Certain parts of it are, for certain. They're seeing things there. But you know, unless I'm boots on the ground or I have someone that I can trust that boots on the ground, it's it's really hard to weigh in on it. And this is from Brian. Hello, a big fan of your work. I admire your tenacity in exposing the truth of our reality. Well, I appreciate the good words, Brian. You can keep us on in your prayers. Have you heard of uh, Dr. Mike Heiser's breakdown of the birth of Christ being 9-11? I think he makes a solid argument using the information given in Revelation 12. So it's very possible. Um extremely possible. I have not accessed that work of Dr. Mike, but, you know, Dr. Heiser was an incredible um, uh, academician. I mean, he was just amazing. And, you know, his work differs from my work. I'm more, like uh, I just said, and Gary Wayne's work. I'm, I'm a field guy. I'm, I'm out of a library and I'm in the field as often as possible. And that's why our, our film series, On the Trail of a Nephilim, we take you to those places. Uh, Dr. Heiser's work is incredible. Uh, Mike is was sorely missed by many uh, of us in the field. And uh, right before he passed away, I was able to email him and we sort of reconciled uh, some, some differences. And uh, his last words to me were, be blessed. And I take that as a great honor. So is it possible that Jesus was born on 9-11? I don't know. Let's go. Let's continue. Uh, this is from Bob. Hey, Ali, I thought I would share in my emails this morning. Love your videos. And basically, this he's sending me a link here. No credible evidence of UFOs found, Pentagon official tells us. <laughs> Man, is that, is, that, is that the old Texas two-step or what? Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just nonsense. And thanks for sending it to me. Sending this to me, Bob. The official charge by the Pentagon to track the mystery surrounding UFOs stated, there's nothing unusual. We'll see at this time. All he needs to do is give me a call, and we'll show him the Convergaz UFO film. UFO film. This, is, this is like just utter doublespeak, in my opinion, 100%. This is from Flo. I am Native American, and in our tribe we display totem poles of various kinds. Since I have become a believer in Jesus, I am born again, and I have renounced all of our pagan ways, which includes the totem poles. I have been told that our totem poles have been placed in strategic places around the world, such as Japan on the ley lines, and witches travel along these lines to obtain energy to travel to their next destination. Do you have any knowledge about this? Well, Flo, not so much about totem poles, but I will tell you this, that those who are in the occult, those who embrace the dark side, will get power. There's no doubt about that. Um, and the brujos, 
And the shamans and the medicine man can do all sorts of stuff. They can shape shift. They can take on uh, the appearance of, of a wolf or a raven, any of those things. A cougar, I mean, they, they can do all that. That's what the power does. They, they can transmogrify themselves. Um, but there's a price that comes with that, and that price is your soul. No thank you. This is from Matt. If a Nephilim hybrids were not able to produce, why was it necessary to say Noah was perfect in his, his generations? Because in my opinion, Matt, that, remember, first of all, you don't have 8 billion on the, uh, people on the planet during a time of Noah. You're in a very small area, very small, okay? How many people? 200,000? 100,000? We don't know. I mean, I, I, don't, I could do a deep dive and maybe get some different opinions, but... Uh, if, you, if you have information on that, send me. Let's say, for our practical purposes, there's one million people living on the planet in the days of Noah, okay? According to the Scripture, it goes out of its way, the Holy Spirit goes out of its way through Moses, thousands of years later, to tell us that Moses was pure in all his generations, meaning that there was no Nephilim blood in him. His generations, his DNA was intact. His DNA was not corrupted in any way, whereas everybody else had somehow ritualistically, ritualistically partook of the Nephilim bloodline, and that's why the flood came down. I hope that helped. Folks, if you've got a question, shoot us a, an email, questions at lamarzuli.net, questions at lamarzuli.net. Thanks so much for watching. So you can go to our streaming site, streaming.lamarzuli.net, streaming.lamarzuli.net. There are 28 films in the corpus of work right now. And by the time we're done and release the last two, which What is the Truth in our UFO series, What is the Truth in our bonus DVD, there'll be 30 DVDs. So um, there's a lot of material, 13 books. Don't forget Vicki Joy Anderson's book, They Only Come Out at Night, on sleep paralysis. It's a must read. Karen Wilkins' new book, which we are proud to publish as well, which is Stolen Seed, Evil Harvest. You're going to want to check both of these things out. I want to wish you all a happy new year. Keep us in prayer. We are on the trail and we'll continue to be on the trail. So we'll see you back again soon. Thanks for watching.